Holly, good morning. What will you hey, guys good be morning, talking about Sarah. here today? Yay, good to see you. Coming up on Undisputed, the Cowboys got the W yesterday, but are they a contender with Dak Prescott as their quarterback? And what happened to the Patriots on that final play yesterday? Amazing. Plus, Hall of Famer Michael Irvin is in studio with us. It's all coming up on Undisputed next. Now, Nick and Chris, the holidays are upon us. They're two of the best debaters I know. So, riddle me this. Work this out. Colored or clear Christmas lights? Which uh one you go with? Cl clear lights is what we have on our tree. Yeah, that's how we do it. Harlem, we, we got clear lights. That's Tribeca, it. we got clear lights. Okay. Classy <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Holly. We appreciate no, it. No, Nick's not classy. Looking forward to it, guys. <laughs> Wait, does that mean I'm not classy? No, no, I you're classy. Colored lights on the oh. Christmas tree? No, you do what you want to do. <laughs> you know what's in style? What Sarah's doing? <laughs> <laughs> Time for us to go viral. And I've always noticed that I've never said anything to her. And, uh... You know, and, and tonight I said something to her for the first time, and she was like, yeah, I've always been team LeBron, always. So she got a pair of LeBrons. I hadn't seen that. That was dope. That's strong. That's and LeBron just kind of flexing his memory muscles where he's like, the ball girl on the Grizzlies every year, this is what she wears on her feet. Like, no, of course, man. You go into a place like that. He sees everything. Man, I'm he into getting everything. the shoes off their feet. You, Bradley Bill was at the hotel in Cleveland. And because I'm fooling around with these guys and everything, I asked, man, let me get them J's, man. He's like, yeah. Tell my equipment guy and everything. And then, and then I'm over here trying to get into Are a you the car. Same size? No, yeah, 13 and a half. Oh, okay. oh, eat it, Nick. <laughs> why, yeah, why, why do I got to eat it? He's a huge shoes. basketball fan, too. <laughs> huge Chris Carter fan, him and his brother. Uh huh. Yeah, Did you I, get the shoes? I didn't get them because uh, I had to go to dinner Carter and spend some maybe of them Fox waited. bucks and everything. But hey, man, 14s, I'm into it. Uh, I'm 13 and a half? You just changed your shoes. Yeah, I got an orthotic. <laughs> <laughs> I got a problem. I got one leg longer than the other one, Nick. See, you're a jerk. You ain't trying to be. I didn't mean to make fun of your disability. <laughs> Sorry, I got orthotic, man. I got my right. leg about a quarter of his leg. I'm going to make sure I don't overcome this. That's why he was calling Ron Peck. I overcame that to be a Hall of Famer, Hall Nick. Peck right? To the Cowboys, where Dak Prescott was trying to make it five wins in a row. Fourth quarter, he gets it to, to uh, Amari Cooper for the touchdown. And the Eagles, though, would respond. Carson Wentz hits Nelson Aguilar. Deep pass on that one, big play for the Eagles. And Darren Sproles would even up the score with less than two minutes to go. So we head to overtime, less than four minutes left, fourth and one. Zeke barely picks up the fourth down, and then three plays later, ball deflected. Cooper grabs it, takes it into the end zone for the game winner. Cowboys win their fifth in a row. Dak with over 450 yards passing, Cooper with over 200 yards receiving. And here he is after the game. I mean, I've been running a lot of slant routes since I got here. I beat these guys on a lot of slant routes when we first played them. That guy knew I was running the slant. So I just stayed with the ball. And uh, thank God. Thank God. Thankful for this team we have. Uh, this team, this coaching staff, uh, and be able to just uh, to continue to fight. And when things were up, things were down. A team that never wavered, that never blinked, that never uh, doubted us coming out on top. Uh, I'm thankful for that, honestly. What has it been like for you joining the Cowboys? It's been a dream come true. When I was young and I thought about playing the NFL, this is the experience. This is really the experience. Everything from the city, the facility, um, and just coming out here playing, winning, playing with passion. It's exciting. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's been a dream come true. All right, Nick. How impressive was that win by the Cowboys? I thought they'd win, but I was wildly impressed with how they did it. Because, listen, this is, it wasn't season on the line, but it was achieve your first goal of the season, win the division. Mm -hmm. They don't have an X next to their name in the standings yet, but they will shortly. They, the only way they don't win the division is if they go 0-3 and, and Philly goes 3-0. and So this, this was essentially a clinching game. And the thing that has carried them during this winning streak, their defense, mm -hmm. abandoned them in the fourth quarter. Right. And Dak Prescott was Perfect in the fourth quarter after through three quarters. See, I thought was having his worst game of the season at the worst moment in the fourth quarter and overtime, three touchdowns, 200 some yards, 85% completions. So, I mean, look at that from where he was through the first three quarters to the fourth quarter in overtime. Mm -hmm. Dak and Amari made the difference. 
And that was, and by the way, the Dak and Amari combo has been the difference in this Cowboys season, where they were three and four before they got Amari. They lost the first game with them, and since then, they haven't lost since then, and makes them a legitimate, not only NFC East threat, they're going to win that division, but now you got to look at them as a real playoff threat. Absolutely. You've seen how they stared down New Orleans a couple of Thursdays ago, the ability and the confidence to be able to win that game. But this, because Dak at all stages, Jerry Jones, even though giving up his other stone, his adopted son, mm -hmm. Tony Romo, mm -hmm. and putting Dak into the lineup, it immediately gave him an influx of tremendous confidence as a young player. That's the reason why people talked about him his rookie year as a legitimate MVP. The reason why Tony Romo is in television was because that faith and confidence that Jerry Jones put in him. And Jerry Jones, when he was trying to, he realized this offseason, they made a mistake. They made a mistake by letting Dez Bryant go. Jason Witten going into television, that was nothing that they could stop. But their wide receiving room was not, was not good enough. So he decided, man, I made a mistake this offseason. I'm not going to let this season waste away. Dez Bryant talked about his lack of growth as a wide receiver. So Jerry Jones, Jason Garrett, they went out and got a former assistant of Coach Pagano, Sanjay Lau, had him come in. He used to coach here in, in New York um, with the teams here. But... His ability to be able to teach young wide receivers and get the best out of his young wide receivers, Michael Gallup, we see, developing. In six weeks with Amari Cooper, his numbers are amazing, but the confidence the wide receiver coach is putting in him, the confidence that Jerry Jones, Amari Cooper is an elite wide receiver, he is worth a first round pick. Jerry made another phone call before he made the trade. He called Nick Saban. Hey Nick, what kind of kid we got here? How should we coach him? How should we approach it? And Nick Saban wrote him a prescription that how to get Amari Cooper, how to get in his headspace. Amari Cooper grew up in Miami, grew up of dreaming of playing for the Dallas Cowboys. He talked about it. Man, these facilities, this type of crowd. He talked about dreams being fulfilled. So that wide receiver coach, that owner, now playing with Dak Prescott, makes them a legitimate contender in the NFC. And I know, listen, I understand Philly fans are upset. They thought some calls went against them. The opening kickoff, they thought the call went against them on what was a fumble. I, I, I get it. I, I, they had the, the winning touchdown. It was this close being a pick six the other way. Yes. But you know what? Like, that's the bounces of an NFL season. And Philly has had countless opportunities this year to right their ship, and they have missed every time. Stop them on the fourth and one. In overtime, and credit to Jason Garrett for going for it there, for learning from his mistake on punting in fourth and two in overtime against the Texans early in the year, right. going for it there and saying we're trying to win the game. But see, when they traded a first round pick for Amari Cooper, I thought this was a desperate team making a move of desperation that was gonna be a top 10 pick they gave up. Instead, it changed their season. I, you've known Amari since he was a kid, since he was 17 years old, or yeah. a teenager, I should say. You never understood what was going on with him in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And I know like you've always believed this is the real Amari Cooper. Yes. And we're now seeing it again. Yeah, he's a force multiplier. When he comes into a room, he has a certain amount of confidence. He has a certain amount of kind of the way he carries him. You can see in the interview with Aaron Andrews how, his, how, how bright he is. And he's a breath of fresh air. He's not a diva wide receiver, but he is a guy. He needs, he needs the people to believe in him. He needs a coach like Mike Groh did at University of Alabama, is doing the same thing right now, that type of treatment with Sanjay Lau. He needs someone to believe in him and breathe confidence into him, and we're seeing that in his play. And he's made Dak better. Dak had an 87 rating before him, a 105 hmm. since. Zeke has been better with him. Michael Gallup's been better. He's made the entire offense have some life. All right, that's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow morning. It starts now.